Hi, I'm Bob Tabor with LearnVisualStudio.net. In this lesson, we're going to talk about grouping content together. We'll start by talking about lists, which are simply groupings of individual list items. And then we're going to broaden the scope and look at grouping the way that the HTML5 specification understands grouping. And we're going to look at all sorts of groupings. Uh, some we've already looked at, just didn't realize that we we're actually looking at a group. And then others that will be completely new to us. All right, so let's start with talking about lists of things. And there's three different types of lists in HTML5. There is the unordered list, the ordered list, and then the definition list. So we always need to start with the specification to see what it says about the semantic meaning of these tags. So uh, again, I encourage you to go to the address. You should already have this bookmarked, uh, but we're looking at the version of the specification called HTML5 edition for web authors. We're gonna scroll down and search through the table of contents by hitting Control F on the keyboard. We're gonna start by looking for the UL element, and that'll get us close to not only the UL element, but also the OL element and the LI element. And so let's start with the unordered list or the UL element. It represents a list of items where the order of the items is not important. That is, we're changing the order would not materially change the meaning of the document. And they have some good examples below. Notice this first one, I've lived in the following countries. And then we have a UL and a number of individual list items. Now one little stylistic thing I want to point out here, notice that they don't use the enclosing uh, slash li element. Uh, the, again, not required in HTML5 for certain items like the list item. Uh, I still feel like it's good practice, so I'm going to encourage that when you're writing code, but you don't have to. Uh, but changing this list of items does not materially change the meaning of the list. You still have lived in all these countries, regardless of whether you list Switzerland uh, before Norway or Norway before Switzerland, okay? So that's essentially what they mean by that. Compare that to the OL, the ordered list, where items have been intentionally ordered such that changing the order would change the meaning of the document. All right, and so a good example here would be uh, I've lived in the following countries given in the order of when I lived, uh, first lived there. So now we have imposed on this list uh, a meaning to each of the individual items. We're changing the, uh, the order of the items would change the meaning of the list. Uh, and so you can see that in this case, Switzerland comes before UK, before US, before Norway, because we're looking at them in a specific order, the order of when I first lived there. Um, the list item element itself is pretty straightforward. There's not a whole lot to it. Notice that it can be used in an OL, a UL, or a menu element, which we're not going to talk about in this series. Uh, and it just gives some additional examples of individual list items. But I think the best way to get this concept under your belt is a little practice, right? So uh, you should be able to download the code that's associated with this video, either from where you're currently streaming the video or from where you originally downloaded it. It should have a folder inside that zip file called Lesson08. Inside that folder, there is a before, after, and a work folder. In the before folder, there's uh, some opportunities for improvement to uh, the HTML file that I have in there. So I'm going to right-click and copy that, and then go back to the work folder and paste it in. And this is where we're going to do our work. I'm going to open it up in Notepad, use whatever technique you're comfortable with to open it up. And you can see that I have uh, sets of list of items and then some other stuff that we'll get to later on in this lesson. But first of all, we're going to start off by creating an unordered list because this list of names, you know, although you and I might be used to hearing these names in a specific order, if you're old enough to remember this. Uh, however, changing the order doesn't change the fact that each of these people are in the list, okay? And I'm going to go ahead and create an OL. So notice I'm going to start with a beginning and an ending OL for order list. And note that I'm just using my space key on my keyboard to create two spaces. This is purely for my for aesthetic purposes as I look at the code. It's definitely not necessary. HTML5 will ignore the white space for the most part. Now we're going to look at the pre tag again here in a little bit and we'll see how that would affect our use of white space. But I merely do this indentation 
for my own readability so I can see kind of the hierarchy or the ownership of the list items and its parent, in this case, the order list. And I'm just wrapping list items, an opening list item and a closing list item around each of the items. And what I wanna do is save the work that we've done with the UL and the OL. I wanna open it up in Internet Explorer and just look at the default, uh, uh, the way that it, it uh, renders uh, with the default style sheet in Internet Explorer 9.0. The unordered list is rendered by default with just a series of bullets, whereas the ordered list is rendered with a series of numbers. Now, we're gonna learn later in this series of videos how we're gonna change that, uh, the, the bullets or the leading character, I guess you'd say, in front of each of these list items using cascading style sheets. And there are a number of options that are available to us there, but this again is the default way that it renders in the browser. Um, and so the ordered list has a, a series of numbers indicating that the, the uh, order is indeed important, okay? So let's go ahead and I'm gonna shut that tab down and I'm gonna close each of these tabs. There's one other list that we wanna look at and it has three parts to it. First of all, it's the DL element and the DL element contains one or more DT elements and one or more DD elements. All right, and so the DL is a definition list. The DL element represents an association list consisting of zero or more name value groups, a description list. Each group must consist of one or more names followed by one or more values. Uh, within a single DL element, there should not be more than one DT element for each name. Okay, and so we can see some examples that they've used here. Uh, within a given DL element, there is a series of authors, maybe for example, in a book that's been written, as well as a series of editors, which in this case, there's only one editor. But at any, at any rate, it, it designates the term authors and the description next to it using uh, a series of DD or definition description uh, elements, okay? And so that's really the difference between the two. The DT element represents the term or the name part of a term description group in a description list. And the DD element represents the description, the definition or the value part of a term description group in a description list. And so anytime you need an association between some notion, some idea, and a, a series of individual list items that are associated somehow with that notion, you want to potentially create uh, a definition list using a DT for the definition term, and then a series of DDs, definition descriptions, for each of the individual items, all right? And so let's put that into practice here. Uh, I have, again, in this lesson08.html, a couple of terms and their definitions. And so what we're gonna do is just wrap a single DL around this entire block. Even though they're really not related, perhaps I have some article I'm working on where I wanna create uh, an area where it uses, uh, it defines terms that were used in the article, maybe in a call out section, and I'm gonna go ahead and create the definitions for each of those items. So I'm just wrapping each of these in a series of DTs and DDs. So in this case, autodidact is defined as a self-taught person, whereas utilitarianism, another definition term, it has two definitions. The first one, Let's go ahead and... and then the second one starts here. All right, so let's see how that's rendered now in our web browser. So I'm going to save the work that I've done and then open it up in lesson08.html and notice the indentation levels for the definition term. The, there's no indentation, but for the definitions below it, there is a full, I don't know, 50 pixels, maybe 100 pixels, a, a full tab, I guess you would say, of, of white space leading into it to make sure you understand the hierarchy between the relationship between the two items. The same is true for the second one where we have two definition terms or, or two definition descriptions underneath the definition term. 
and you can see they're nicely aligned uh, as well so you can see the clear uh, hierarchy of, of the of the items together okay all right so we've looked at uh, all three of the lists that we're going to look at in this in this series but um, you know, at a high level, again, we're talking about groupings of items. In this case, we're looking at groupings of list items. But the authors of the HTML5 specification understood the concept of grouping in a more macro sense. Uh, and if we can see this, let's close all this down. Here we are in where we were working with the OL, the UL, the LI, the DL, the DT, and the DD. It's all from this grouping content area here in, in the documentation. And you can see that there are several additional groupings. Uh, and when you think about it, for example, it has the paragraph element. Well, the paragraph element is a grouping of thematically similar content together, at least as, as it was defined in HTML5 specification, as we saw in lesson number four. In addition to the P element, we have the block quote element, which we learned about in lesson five, and there's also the figure and fig caption, and the div element, which we learned about in the previous lessons as well. These are all responsible for grouping things, just like our lists what they group is just a little bit different. All right, so what I wanna do is pick two additional items from this list and talk about them. We briefly, briefly talked about the pre-element. Let's go ahead and open that up in a new tab. And the pre-element represents a block of pre-formatted text in which structure is represented by typographic conventions rather than elements. And so it gives some examples of where this might be used. Uh, email with paragraphs indicated by blank lines, lists indicated by uh, lines prefixed with a bullet and so on. Uh, fragments of computer code, that's the example that we saw when we were looking at the code element in lesson number four, with structure indicated, uh, indicated according to the conventions of that language, and then finally displaying ASCII art. So back to our examples here, you can see that whenever we open this web page up, uh, at the very bottom here, we have some computer code and then we have some ASCII art, but it loses its value, its meaning, because it's not formatted correctly. And so the pre-element uh, pre will allow us to allow it to retain its formatting with the white space and line uh, continuations and things of that nature. So I'm just going to wrap pre's around both of these listings. Uh, pre around the public class hello one, uh, public static void main. This is just a snippet of C-sharp code to create a hello world example. And then here you can clearly see, as I pasted it in, uh, some ASCII art of an alien, all right? Uh, and now whenever we've added the pre tags to it and we open it up, this will look like actual code and this will look like ASCII art, okay? And so that's all that we use the pre tag for. Okay, um, so finally, let's talk about the HR element. Let's close all this down. And you can see that's another one of these items in the grouping content list here. And the HR element represents a paragraph level thematic break. For example, a scene change in a story or a transition to another topic within a section of a reference book. All right, so uh, it derives its name from a horizontal rule HR which uh, indicates presentation but it has been repurposed previously you would use it to just create a line across the screen okay and you think about it purely in terms of presentation but it's been repurposed as a grouping function in HTML5 to group or rather uh, to do the opposite to separate themes in a given document still its default style sheet as you're gonna see in a moment is a horizontal rule or horizontal line on a web page but now it has this rich semantic meaning so I think the probably the easiest way to do this is just to add an HR element and we can just type it like that or we can use a self enclosing uh, um, with a slash near the end of the angle bracket I'm just going to use the uh, the format that I probably will use now that we're working with HTML5 which is just the HR element by itself and we can see how it's rendered as we separate one thematic idea from a new thematic idea using this horizontal rule, this HR, all right? And it just, by default, with the default style sheet in Internet Explorer, creates 
a horizontal line. However, again, as we looked in the specification, it can uh, it doesn't have to be rendered that way necessarily, and we're thinking more semantically. It's separating two different ideas, but are uh, added to the same document. Okay. All right, so we've covered all the grouping content here or in previous lessons. So now let's move on to tables and learn their proper uses as well as their abuses in the next lesson. We'll see you there. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you.